नमस्ते एवरी वन एंड वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टू दी जे सी ई कनेक्ट सो आई एम नरेश पाटिल एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस दी नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दी डिजाइन ऑफ प्रिशियस कॉन्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर्स ओके सो इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी डिस्कस अबाउट the flexural strength of member we discuss about the what is flexural strength and how the flexural strength will develop in the member okay and even we discuss about what are the failures in flexural strength or what are the different types of failures in flexural member that to in precious concrete beams okay so today in this session we are going to calculate or we are going to discuss the computation of flexural strength or how to determine the flexural strength of given section so in that again it is categorized into two section that is one is flexural strength of rectangular section or t section in which neutral axis the location of neutral axis lies within the flange okay that is very important so it is given as the rectangular section or t section where okay the rectangular section is a one part the one more thing is important is t section or a flanged section where the neutral axis is lying within the flange so why it is called as a rectangular section only because it's a t section it is called as rectangular section or t section means t section will act as a rectangular section only when the neutral axis is lying within the flange and this part i think we have discussed or you have studied in your uh, subject uh, in your design of rcc structure the subject known as design of rcc structure when the neutral axis in flange section or t section lying within the flange that t section will behave or it will act as a rectangular section only for width breadth of flange for you have to take the width of flange as uh, the width of the section okay so here the same part we are going to discuss again here so we can see here the neutral axis is nothing but xu okay so here we have one rectangular section for size b and d so this is the neutral axis for rectangular section and here we have one more section a t section for width b b is nothing but here breadth of flange and this is tw that is width of web and this is depth of web so here our xu is less than depth of flange our xu is less than depth of flange if you check here this is our depth of flange so i can say it is a df so xu is less than df means our depth or the location of neutral axis is lying lying within the flange it is not outside the flange so based on this the behavior of the flange section will change if neutral axis lying outside the flange or within the flange so in this case the neutral axis is lying within the flange so this t section this flange section will behave as a rectangular section only when how it will behave only in when the neutral axis lying within the flange okay so according to that we have the stress block diagram so this is called as stress block okay so what indicates this what is this stress block mean according to the neutral axis the location of neutral axis the portion or the fibers or the material above the neutral axis will offer compression and below the neutral axis it will offer tension okay you can see the quantum of this so this part will offer compression and this will offer tension which is offered by this reinforcement or this steel okay so according to that this is compression this is tension and this is our xu okay this is our xu so how you get again so this is cu and this is tu these two forces will act each other these two forces means cu will act over or about tu 
with respect to Z that is liver arm or TO will act with respect to CU or about CU again multiply Z so that is itself movement of resistance CU into Z or TO into Z both are same both are called as movement of resistance or the internal resistance of the section so CO will offer by concrete and TO will offer by steel so both material provided in this section will behave in their own way and they will act over each other with respect to the liver arm and they will develop a internal moment of resistance so we can see here so TU is equal to tensile force this TU is equal to tensile force okay which is nothing but FPU into AP means stress into area stress is what FPU is stress in steel into area of pre-stress so stress into area you will get force then again CU is equal to compressive force that is 0.36 FCK into B into XU so this the area of this stress block is 0.36 FCK into FCK into B into XU so this is the compressive force this is nothing but the tensile force now how to get the moment of resistance therefore the moment of resistance MU is equal to TU into Z means force into perpendicular distance moment this is the moment of resistance or the internal resistance provided by the material so that is TU into Z so TU is the tensile force into the vertical distance with respect to the compression force so that is TU into Z so what is TU TU is FPU into AP and what is this distance is D minus 0.42 XU why it is because this distance is 0.42 XU okay you have to understand here so this distance is 0.42 XU okay and the total distance is D from here to here the total distance is D and how to get this it is D minus 0.42 XU so we will get this value T minus 0.42 XU understood so where so this is nothing but the moment of resistance of the section where FPU is equal to what is FPU tensile stress FPU is the tensile stress developed in the tendons the value of FBU depends upon effective reinforcement ratio the value of FPU is depends on what the effective reinforcement ratio and that value you can find out that value you can find out from I think uh, that value you can find out from IS1343-1980 from IS1343-1980 so this table is available in IS1343 I will forward that uh, code into the group so we can cross check so here we have two values that is AP into FP upon BDFCK so we have to find out this ratio according to that they have given two columns main two columns that is stress in tendons so here in the design strength so you will get FPU and here you will get XU by D to check whether the neutral axis lie within the flange or outside the flange and again it is divided into two separate division that is whether it is pre-tensioning system or post-tensioning with effective bond then again pre-tensioning post tension in with effective bond so this table is used only when this is very important title of the table conditions at the ultimate limit state of rectangular beam with pre tension tendons or with post tension ten post tension tendons having effective bond if it is mentioned in the question whether it is effective bond means with bond or without bond it is again the table will change based on whether it is with bond or without bond so according to that we have to choose the table okay so this is a condition then again there is one more table here there is one more table here so this condition is given for unbonded so previous table is we have to refer for bonded you have to refer for bonded tendons if it is unbonded tendons again we have this ratio so from this you will get fpu again x by d so i will explain how to use these tables or how to use this uh, charts for the calculation of uh, flexural strain when you solve the problems okay so we'll move ahead next okay so 
the next is what so this value you have to find out from the uh, to get the values from the table to choose the values from the table you have to find out this ap into fp upon bd into fck where ap is area of precious these things will be given in the problem this will be given data according to this you will get one ratio that is called as effective reinforcement ratio according to that effective reinforcement ratio you have to get the value of fp and xu by d so here ap is nothing but area of precious okay so that is for first first part second so i told you it has divided into two parts so the second is flexural strength of flanged section so it is purely for flexural strength of flanged section so the, this is very important so pure the first category it is for flexural strength for rectangular section now it is the flexural strength for flanged section when neutral axis lies below the flange when x is more than df so when x is more than df the behavior of the flange section will depend upon the force carried by flange part and the force carried by web part because the neutral axis lying below the flange okay so now the moment of resistance of moment of resistance is computed by combining moment of resistance of web and flange so i told you na so it is depend on the force offered by flange and the force or the moment taken by flange and the moment resisted by web moment resisted by flange and the moment resisted by flange so total together that is combined moment of resistance okay so we'll go back again to the behavior of the flange section so we have the breadth of flange d tw again so see here it is superimposed so this is for web part and this is for flange part this is for web and this is for flange okay so it is given here 0.45 ck and the c1 so it is c1 and c2 c1 c2 c1 is force offered by flange plus force offered by force offered by web plus force offered by flange okay so here tw means for web part tf means flange part so this is c1 c2 c1 equal to tw c2 equal to tf that is the internal forces offered by the web and flange okay so according to that again if you equate here so from above c is equal to c1 plus c2 what c the total compressive force is equal to c1 plus c2 okay so what is c1 c1 is compressive force in the web so this for web i told you this part is for web so this when you superimpose these two both so you will get the total force okay so this is for web so that's why it is c1 is equal to compressive force in the web so which is equal to 0.36 fck bw into xu then again c2 is equal to compressive force in the flange so that is 0.45 ck bf minus bw into df so why is bf minus bw so we have already taken care of web here so we have to deduct this so that's why it is bf minus bw total bf minus bw into tf because the depth this element is taken care by c2 so this df bf minus bw into df so that is the area of element which will take care of compressive force c2 okay then ultimately what is t t is again fp into ap stress in the tensile stress in tendon into area of tendon so that is ultimate you will get fp into ap so when you equate <coughs> ap is equal to what is ap now here ap is equal to apw plus apf ap is equal to apw plus apf understood so what is apf area of this thing so 0.45 ck bf minus bw into df by fp then what is apw apw is ap minus apf so total area of precious is apw plus apf so when you get apf so apw is equal to ap minus apf that is the ultimate answer okay then after that mu mu is what again so here you can see fpu into apw into d minus 0.42 xu so again here it is
this force okay so you can check here ah. this force oh tw into point foot d minus point foot x u so here tw into z and tf into z okay so that is you can see here tw into z and tf into z you can see here okay that is that is fpu into apw into d minus point foot to xu plus fp so this is this is a force or the moment of resistance for web part so this is for web so this is i can write mu w plus mu f mu w plus mu f so that will be total so mu will be mu w plus mu f so mu w is what moment resisted by web and mu f is moment resisted by flange so that will be total moment of resistance for flange section when the depth of neutral axis lying below the flange lies below the flange so this is regarding the uh, formulas for the computation of flexural strength of members or for the the bending strength or the capacity in flexure for pre stress concrete section okay so uh, i'll uh, upload the i'll forward the uh, is code in the group okay so you go through the equations and how to refer the tables you go and you check once and so for the next class when i start with the problems that will not be uh, that will be uh, good for you people otherwise it will be confusion when we start directly for the uh, problems okay so you uh, go back and you check once again hmm? and you check how to uh, refer the tables okay thank you